Hello, if you've seen my latest video, you know that I've been making and donating masks to the frontline healthcare workers. The sewing machine that I use to do so, the Brother SE600, also has an embroidery machine option. This embroidery machine comes with a lot of pre-built designs and pre-made designs loaded onto it, but after a certain point you want to use your own designs. So, two days ago, I began the ultimate search for free software that works on Mac that can easily digitize and and create um, embroidery machine file form files in the file format. So after a long search with seeing lots of different prices ranging from $150 to $1,500 I finally found the perfect option, which is completely free. It uses Inkscape, which by itself is just a vector art software, but we connect it with the Inkstitch plugin, which will allow us to export to different um, embroidery machine file formats. So, in this video, I'm going to be going over how to download Inkscape, how to use the Inkstitch plugin, how to and how to connect the Inkstitch pl plugin, of course. And then how? And then I'll be showing you how to create an embroidery with just a file downloaded off the internet. I won't be showing you how to actually put this on your machine, but if that's a requested topic, then I'll be doing another video on that shortly. On a side note, if you would like to help my brother and I on our endeavors to donating and helping out those in need during this crisis, please visit our Etsy shop, where we've allocated a portion of our production to to commercial sales so that we can raise funds and continue doing so and with like the materials and everything. All help will be great, greatly appreciated. Thank you and hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so like I said earlier, everything that we're going to be doing in this video is completely free and it's not like we're using free trials or anything. It's all completely free. You can keep it forever. and all of this works well and it's not like cheating or anything it's all like it's just all free software in general so the first one that we're going to be using is called inkscape so this is a general art software it's for vector art and so you're going to want to go to inkscape.org this will be linked in the description and you, you're going to want to press the download now button so the download process for inkscape is pretty straightforward it's cross-platform so it works fine and it's pretty straightforward it's like every other app but the next thing we're going to do it's a little bit less straightforward but it's still pretty simple so but i'll just walk through that okay so once you've got inkscape installed we're going to install the next thing it's called ink stitch so you press this download ink sketch but ink stitch button it'll take you to the release page so the thing is i'm on mac so um it's current like the the latest release isn't working on mac right now so if you're on windows or I think it also works on Linux. It um then you can go through with the release instructions on there. But if you're on Mac, you're just gonna wanna, um go to the installation in this user manual section, right? So it's near the bottom, this Mac OS section, right? So I'm on Mac. I'm not on Catalina. I'm on Mojave. So I would download this English Mojave. But if you're on High Sierra Sierra, but also if you're on Catalina, it's going to be a little bit different than what I'll show in the video, but they do explain how to do it pretty easily. And it all, it's, if you just follow these steps on the website and it, then you should just be perfectly fine. So you would want to go ahead and download this or download it the way you would for Catalina. And I'll come back to you explaining how to do it for Mojave. Okay, so once you've downloaded it from the website, it'll download as a tar.gz file. Just um, double click it to open it and Archive Utility will like unzip it. So then if you go inside of it, you'll have this folder. So this just has all the stuff that we just downloaded. Then we want to go to our applications folder and we'll find where Inkscape is. Right click on it and press show package contents. Go to contents, resources share then inkscape then go to extensions and now this is where you want to see it so um 
so I have already installed it. But what you're guys, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna, you'll take everything from here, you'll scroll down to the bottom, and drag all of this into here. So now this, all of this stuff gets added to here. Okay, so once you've um, installed the plugin and everything, you're gonna want to start Inkscape up. If you had it running while you were installing the plugin, just restart it, or else the um, extension w or won't take effect. So now what we can do is we can go to Google Chrome or just w wherever and find something, find an image that we want. I'm just doing the Google logo for example, and we'll just like download this to our computer. And then we can just drag it into Inkscape. So I've already done that, and you can see it right here. And when you import it, just keep all the same basic options. So just press OK when the pop up comes up. So what I'll do is I'll just scale this down. If you were actually embroidering this, I'm not going to be doing this on the actual machine, but if you were, you would want to measure it and see how it is. Like my machine has a maximum of 100. Um, 100 width and height so 154 millimeters is will not do so I'd have to make this smaller but that's not really the point right now so what I'm gonna do is we've imported this but if you notice we can't really do anything with it the problem is we just imported like a JPEG image but we need to somehow make it into a like a vector graphic or yeah, just a vector graphic so that Ink Stitch can read it. Okay, so what you're gonna do in order to counteract that is you'll click on this, then you won't be able to see this because it's in the menu, but you're gonna go to Path and then press Trace Bitmap. So now you'll see this menu pop up. So I've already adjusted some of the values, but if I press Update, you can see, oh no, this isn't actually gonna work out. That's because these have multiple colors, so I can change some of it. Okay, I guess seven. So it's kind of like trial and error, but I would assume five because you also have the white background. But you can see this is kind of grainy. Like we don't really want that that much. So we can see how we can adjust that. Maybe smoothing corners. I didn't really see a big difference, but maybe if we increase the threshold here, so like three. Oh, never mind. Okay, and optimize. So you can just play around with these tools. I think for now I'll just be fine with this. But if you guys want to, you can look more into this. Then you press OK. So now you see we've gotten this thing. We still need to delete the original image. So I'll just drag this out of the way for now. And then delete delete it. So now you can see I, have, I, I can zoom in as much as I can. But just being able to zoom in doesn't mean anything if we can't do our... Um, embroidery stuff so the first thing we're gonna do is we need to separate this because um, with these gaps it doesn't know what is what is what are different objects so to make it as easy as possible for the ink stitch we're gonna separate this out I'll select it then go up to path and then press break apart now you can see we've got all of these things but oh no, we had O's and we had E's. Where did they go? Well, they just kind of got filled in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the layers panel. So this is, I'm kind, I might be overcomplicating this a little bit. But um, I'm going to just change the colors of all of the things that were inside of here. That were, that were once inside. I'll just change them to something that you can easily see. Like pink. Or really any color other than this black. So what I'm going to do is... Then I'll open the layers panel, which is this. You can see we already have this layer 1 here, but we want to make, make a new layer. So I'll add the layer, layer 2, and we want this to be above the current layer. So now I'm going to select all three of these. Not this one, because this one's already above. Let's check this. Yeah. Then I'm going to select these three. I'll, I mean, except for this. These three. I'll right click on it, and I'll press move to layer, layer 2. So now you see these are all on top. So if I just replace the position of this, and I'm not going to say I can replace this for the other one, I'm sorry, but I'm just going to have to change and then just go back to the same position as before. Okay. Now what we can do is I can select this, and I can select this, and I'll press path, and I'll press difference. I'll do 
So now you can see we've got our shapes, we've got everything we want. So what's stopping us from doing it? Well, nothing currently. But on our embroidery machines, we can do different colors. Like we can make this a different color, this a different color, and that's that, well, that's what the Google logo is like in real life too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tell the software that these are different colors. So let's select the first one and I'll make it a blue color. It doesn't have to be the exact right blue. There has to be a. It doesn't even have to be a blue color. But basically the relations need to be the same. This G is gonna be the same color as this one, so it needs to be the exact same color as this one. Like if this was pink, then this would have to be the exact same thing. The same thing. Now this is red. I'm just gonna do this. You don't need to do all exactly. Yellow, green. So this is yellow. And this is green. So it doesn't have the exact same colors because the truth is. In the embroidery machine, I can put in any color I want when it's asking me to do the blue. I can put in any color I want when it's asking me for to do the red. So at that time, I would put in the proper red. I would put in the proper yellow. I would put in the proper green. I would put in the proper blue. So now, we've got our whole document pretty much sorted out. Now, I'm going to go over how you can use Inkstitch to actually make this into an embroidery design. We've got our whole design sorted out in Inkscape. So now we're going to use the Inkstitch plugin or extension, whatever you want to call it, to get this um, actually finalized and working. So the first thing you want to do is params. So when you open up params, it'll start up a new thing down here. And you, you should see that sometimes yeah, it'll open up this. Um, it's going to open up a preview window here, showing you how the how the embroidery machine will be doing this. So I'll first start, just watch it go through. You can see how it embroiders the design. So one thing that's kind of troubling me is how it's not doing the colors at the same time, but that's not really a big deal. Another thing is it's not really doing the connection lines, but that's also not too big of a deal. So this is all good, but now you can see in here, this is all the stuff you can mess around with. So if you were doing different things like straight lines, you'll see a lot more menus up here. But right now, since we're just doing this, it's got autofill. So you can see the angle of the lines, and now when I start, I start, I start, you can see it's going at 45 It's going at 45 degree angle, when before it was going at zero. I don't really care I'm just gonna keep it back at zero I'm not really sure if it makes a big difference I think it's more for just the final look of it so you can see between these stitches right there's a little bit of a gap because it's kind of just going up and down here so that's the spacing between rows so if I wanted the spacing to be bigger for example if I wanted to reduce the number of stitches here I could increase the spacing between the rows to maybe 0.5 this isn't gonna look good but you can see how it looks now you can see it's actually pretty visible the spaces between the rows but you can see we've also got 3020 so we almost cut it by half it messes with the look of your design and how it works there's also other things here that you can see how they work with but for now I'm just going to set this back to 25 I like the original things how they were and if I just press start again yeah and you can change the speed too to make it go faster or slower in the simulation but so that's so this is good so if I'm if I like how these settings are and everything is good, I'm just gonna press apply and quit. So now I'm back into the Inkscape, and what I can do is I can go to extensions, Ink Stitch. Now we'll press embroider. So this is our final menu. So this is the type. This is the file format that you're gonna do. So PES, PEC. These are the brother. These are the brother embroidery formats. So I have the brother SE 600. So these two files work with that. But obviously, whichever machine you have or file format your machine uses, this will um, work out. So um, that, and then this directory, I'll explain in a second. And here, you can see live preview will show you right here what it will kind of look like. So you can just check one more time to see if you like the way your stitches are coming out. So now this directory, if you hover over, it'll say leave blank to save in the Inkscape's extension directory. If you don't remember, that was where our um, that was where we put in the extensions, which I'll show you in a second. So I'm just gonna save it to there. And I'll just call it, and I'll just press apply. Once that's done, you can just wait a little bit. And if you go back to the extensions folder, you should find it called embroidery.pes or whatever file type you store it as. So I have the Stitch Buddy software on my computer. This is optional for this. So, but all this lets me do is it lets me see it. And, but like I was mentioning earlier, right? Um, this is 150 millimeters long. So I can't actually place this inside of the, um, inside of the brother, um. So that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned a little bit about how to do this in a much more affordable way with literally no cost. And it'll work for everyone because it's cross-platform. So hopefully you guys have learned something. If you think someone else can benefit from this, please be sure to share it. Also, 
if even if they won't benefit from it share it with them annoy your friends um like the video if you liked it dislike if you didn't but preferably like it subscribe and comment um and don't 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 forget to check out the sc shop to help support my brother and i support the uh frontline workers it's youmakers.etsy.com thank you